Okay, Bitrate. Are you gonna s settle the fuck down? It looks like it's settling the fuck down here. I'm, uh... It's, uh... It's about 6,000. It's, uh... It's holding steady at, yeah, about, about 6,100. 6,300. 6,100 again. Okay. Um... I believe we'd say that the, um... The, uh, the, the fluctuations are within safety parameters, and there is nothing to worry about, Gordon. Right, okay. So, um, let's get on with it then, now that we have, uh, stabilized the slipstream, as it were. However, the audio for the, the emulator is quite quiet, but okay. That might have just been because the song was looping, but okay. Okay. Right. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am your host, Fontaman, and welcome back to the show. Today we're playing Blue Archive, and we're going to do World 5 so we can unlock PvP and style on nerds with... Yeah, I, 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 I can't really style on everyone, because I don't have all of the cute event girls that are broken in some manner. But we're definitely going to do a thing, because I know a trick or two. See, the thing about PvP is, you have to throw people curveballs. I know a few curveballs. And on top of that, we get to introduce our- introduce everyone to, um... Well, and introduce everybody who doesn't know to, uh, this- The other tank in the game, the other primary tank in the game, or the tank- The other primary tank the game launched with, because there were really only two. Everybody gets to meet Tsubaki once we actually, you know, get on with this. And, oh, sweet mother of God. Wow! We are just having a thing today, aren't we? The bitrate's going nuts. Nox is falling apart. I really should move over to Blue Stacks. Yikes. What's going on here now? Hold on a second. Hello, Karen's ass and Karen. What the fuck's going on now? Hmm. Okay, there's nothing using an obnoxious number, you know, obnoxious, obnoxious amount of server, of computer resources. Hey. Thank you, Deku, once again, for your generosity, and, uh... Those of you in the audience that received gift subs, enjoy your gift subs. They help with the ads, I'm told. <laughs> I also get a buck, uh, two... I also get 250 for each one. So, thank you for your support, and enjoy your subs. Now... Not quite sure what the fuck happened there, but let's get on with it. Because I was actually in the back room doing all of the things that I needed to do. Wow. That's bad. That's really bad. Hang on, I think I'm gonna have to actually restart this. Cause that's just gonna be awful. Jesus. Hang on there, let me just restart that even though I had just restarted it a second ago. Yeesh. That's not going to be any a, a good viewer experience at all. It's going to be a slideshow. But okay, just waltzing over technical problems. At least the bitrate solved itself. Now we have to worry about uh, Nox imploding. But uh, I promise, next time we actually have a stream, I'm going to... You know, if Blue if blue Stacks works, we're going to move over there. I'll test it later tonight. But okay, so... um. Hopefully with more stability now, because G Blue Archive is just a fucker of a game for emulators, let me tell you. It runs fantastic on my phone, though. The only problem is, uh, while streaming from my phone would be rather, um, difficult. Let's say, let's say that, say the least there. D difficult. Uh, definitely a thing. Okay, the music seems to have calmed the fuck down. So that means the sound isn't in the process of exploding. 
But like I said, we're going to go through World 5, and then we're going to do 6-1, and then we're going to unlock Tactical Challenge, I believe it's called, if I remember correctly, which essentially is going to be, well, PvP. And what's PvP in this game? Essentially exactly the fucking same as Azerlane's PvP. You just put the girls in there and you watch them go, which is fun because you have a mode in this game where you have even less fucking control over the outcome. Uh, Blue Archive is already really, really, really scarce on the gameplay elements. So I'm not... I'm not entirely sure why they thought that was a good idea, but to hit mobile game things, other people get away with it. I guess we can too. Which is the sad thing about this game. It looks really nice. It's It's got nice production values. It's, you know, peppy and fun to watch. The only problem is it's only really watching even when you're the one playing the fucking game. It's not much of a game. Which is rather sad because this thing, uh, this game has to, uh, it has to go up against the, the likes of actual games, uh, such as Ark Knight, which is currently the king of I'm a gacha, but I'm actually a fucking game where you need to use your brain. Oh, Christ, here we go again. What the hell is going on with you today, Nox? Do I just have to turn you off entirely in order to fix this problem? I might have to because the frame rate's in the gutter. All right, hang the fuck on here. You're getting turned off. Hey, Fonto, I have great news. Shimiko got her live 2D in JP. Yeah, I saw that. That was rather fucking surprising. I would have... I, uh, though, I... Uh, I would have figured that... Um, I would have figured that all the girls in the game actually had a live 2D when the game launched, and Shimiko's a launch girl, so I would have figured that, you know, they would have already had one, I just didn't see it yet, but okay, she's got one. Now fix her fucking ability to make it actually useful, or give us an event version of her. <clears throat> Plug suit! Mm, sorry about that, that's just kind of a reflex. Uh, I'm a mecha fan, it just kind of happens. Right, but uh, give her an, an event version of some description with better fucking abilities, as seen by by Bunny Asuna, as we will see, who is basically a straight upgrade. You don't need to use regular Asuna ever again once unlocking her. There's also two new live 2Ds on of the JP's new girls, including the one with with that Saint Inger, apparently. Yeah, right. Saint Inger and basically what's her face, the potato digger from Girls Frontline. Uh, it's basically the same meme, same color palette, same hairstyle, G small girl, large back backpack, and judging from the screenshots, troubled backstory, sad times, small girl, big ba big uh, backpack, lots of feels, and apparently in her suit, you know, magical suitcase, she has a Barrett. The new girls, I don't know who they are or what faction they belong to, but it seems to have something to do with volume three of the story. And it really looks like they all of a sudden went, hey, guys, let's me let, let's be more more girls frontline real quick. <laughs> that really feels like what the fuck they're doing. They are just suddenly taking a turn from Blue Archive, as we understand it, to right into fucking uh, crippling depression and android girls from what I see. They may not actually be robots, though. So unfortunately, this has become kind of a chat stream, but sorry, just uh, weeding out some technical difficulties in the background. But hey, we did have that idea that I had, uh, where uh, Twitch plays Necronica, which is basically just me a chatting stream. But don't tell anyone. I swear I have a better idea. I swear. I don't know how we're going to manage voting for the pseudo quest thread adventure that that would be, but I guess I'll work on it as I go. I heard, all I heard from all the senseis that played is that the stinger is a doomer, while the other, while the other one no like her fat tummy. <laughs> okay, I, I did the second one, um, the second one looked a little bit, you know, more concerning because of some of the screenshots they had in her, her you know, in her pre presentation image. But yeah, Saint Inger the doomer with... Fucking air-launched submunition, uh, you know, cluster bombs was... Yeah, no, I got that. I, I really... You really got that one. 
absolutely fucking depressed up to her eyeballs. I yeah, that one that one comes through the art. But I barely knew Blue Archive aside from their porn, so I don't know. <laughs> Um, Data, if you've been watching the streams, uh, you know, you you know that the story is, uh, rock and roll and, you know, coke, more or less, space coke and rock and roll, uh, but, uh, if you haven't, yeah, no, it's basically a bunch of questionably mentally stable girls uh, with, uh, damn near magical powers and firearms. I really don't know how the fuck this world works. But it's basically boiling down to everyone's a high school student, everyone has guns, and is walking around with halos above their heads. And on top of that, all of them are some varying, you know, weird remix of completely fucking nuts. Aris girls are just depressed and maybe want to off themselves. AGAIN! <laughs> that one kind of came through! Just by looking at their art, art, that one, that one's pretty fucking obvious. Whoever the fuck they are, uh, they definitely, most likely post sad Wojaks in their spare time. They're, they're definitely sad Wojak posters. That, mu that, that, uh, that much I can actually tell. It's actually my first time watching this stream in a while, Lomo. I heard Blue Archive stuff pretty much from the Girls Frontline EN Discord. Since half of them, half of them, half of them PTSD Griffin commanders are also happy senseis. Yeah, not everybody can be depressed all the fucking time. Not everybody can be, you know, um, 45, you know, depressed. Sometimes we flip the switch and, you know, we, we go over, over to Happy Land. Even though I will say that Girls Frontline is the superior story, but the writing in Blue Archive is there. It's doing it again. Fuck it. Whatever. We'll do it live. I have no idea what's going on, but it's probably down to my PC at some point, or just Knox. Maybe it's my internet. I don't know. Fuck it, whatever. <laughs> yeah, whatever. We d we dealt with lag before. Yes, um, Karen, I will say that even as a slideshow, your ass is absolutely impeccable. Mmm, mmm, I felt that in my soul. Mmm, that fucking chug. BA is like slice of life to girls frontline dramedy. Somewhat? Though looking at the RS girls, I feel like ha ha ha! Uh, this is gonna get kind of worrying. And there was also the Binna introduction, which was extremely fucking worrying! Even though it kind of just boiled down to hey, Sensei, use the power of friendship to dethrone a god. Blue Stacks, please save us. I would I would hope so. We'll get to the story as we actually unlock World 5, because now we're actually over-leveled, and we can complete it now. Actually, wait a minute, I think... What was the level requirement? It was it was 40. I think we're actually at par. We just need to make it through the level, though. We've got some pretty fucking terrifying girls now. Right, okay, and, the, and the stepping on these tiles will delete the tiles now. Amazing game mechanics. Not really all that amazing. <clears throat> Jesus Christ, we're dead. Man, I just had the game open. It was running fine. I don't know why the hell it's actually herking at the mere concept of loading models. Right, well, um, all things considered, we can kind of just roll with who we have because we're facing mostly red enemies and there's nothing else to really be done about it. What we probably couldn't do is actually level up Akari and Hina here just to actually act as moral support. Also, uh, actually getting a level support there, we'll be fine. Put Karen in there just for the sake that she actually gives a buff. I didn't actually notice that because um, I wasn't looking terribly hard because uh, I was distracted by Bunny Karen and wasn't really looking at regular Karen all that much. I'm, I'm, I like maids too, but you know what? I was enthralled. But she gives a, I think I, I have leveled it up once. Leveled it up once. I think it's a 10% buff to allied attack power, which is actually pretty good. I mean, Serena does basically everything else, so why the fuck not? Once we get into PvP, though, you're gonna start to see a pattern with supports. You may not- it may be something- to, it may be something I need to I say out loud, but you- you might be able- you might be smart enough to pick up on who the fuck the- the ace supports are. It might- 
You might need to be told. I think I think you're all smart enough to maybe notice the pattern. <laughs> anyway, right. Let's get in there. Make Karen's Choco but aid your journey. Yes. May the, all the treasures that we have acquired aid us in the journey, like we're actually playing like Risk of Rain or something. Risk of Rain, but all of the artifacts are, are different bunny girls. Yes. Speaking of which, we actually have to play Risk of Rain too because somebody gifted it to me. For PvP, you either use meta units or you lose. Unfortunately, that is basically how it works. However, within the meta units, I know how to fuck people. I know some early game strats that were working when the game launched. I'm not sure how valid they are now, but I know how to kind of fuck people. The only problem is we don't have Hibiki, so we're not totally fucking golden, but we have, well, we have Iori and Haruna who are extremely fucking good. But now, honestly, we not, we may not have even needed, you know, Haruna now that we have, you know, Bunny Karen. Who might actually wind up being superior because I I have more stuff, yeah, more of her skills are leveled. And also, yes, auto battles. I forgot I had that on. I don't think we're going to actually really need it, though. Uh, so yeah, uh, welcome back to the Blue Archive chatting stream, uh, where the video game is so much flash I don't even have to fucking play it. Blue Archive is just a really unfortunate situation of good idea, really suspected implementation. It is really quite sad. But hey, this will make getting through the, the you know, the world really quick because we have to play 6-1. So we have to get through all of World 5, and then play the first map of World 6 in order to unlock PvP. So, well, it's gonna be quick. That much I can tell you. Because all we have to do is just fucking sit here and just let the game play itself, more or less. Really is unfortunate, but I, like I said, you know, on the prior stream, I really hope Girls Frontline 2 opens the door for Gacha Girl franchises in actual fucking video games. What are you using that on? That guy's already dead. The AI is a brilliant work of art here. What are you going to use Karen's ability on? The man's already dead. But as you can see here, this is also why Serena is actually really good for the PvP scenario, because she can heal twice, and you, you don't have to actually tell her to do anything. Game sucks, but I love it. It's... It's unfortunate. If you desperately needed something to be really engaged with, yeah, Ark Knights is probably still king of the fucking pile here, unfortunately. Girls Frontline... Girls Frontline is an ass load of grinding. Oh, for the love of Christ. Let me finish the damn mode. What? Wait, it's three o'clock! Time for everything to reset, and I have to go off and do a, do everything again. Damn, interruptions after interruption after interruption. Oh well. Par for the course here on this stream, honestly. Since when have things been totally fine and not without struggles? Uh, never, honestly, absolutely never. I'm, I'm good at wearing a mask sometimes, though. But oh well. It's not like the rest of the world is doing much better in terms of being scattershot. But really, this game could have used, well, some more ideas for actually playing the, you know, actual gameplay. Maybe some time in the, more time in the oven. But um, from what we understand about the game, it really, um, 
it's, it's, it's really kind of a surprise that we actually have the damn thing, because this wasn't even really... This, the studio responsible for this wasn't even actually focusing on this at all until very late in the project, apparently. This is a B-team project that they just kind of went, hmm, this is a good idea, let's go with this. But unfortunately, because of that, there are some glaring flaws built into the system that are slowly being addressed. She did it again. She did it again on the same fucking guy. No wonder you girls need my fucking help. You're all retarded. But you already knew that! But it would, it would be nice to see a, you know, whatchamacallit, uh, not necessarily a, uh, like an XCOM, you know, ripoff that, well, Girls Frontline 2 is basically just going to be, it's just, a, it's, it's going to be XCOM. Not necessarily that, but I suppose more of a, I suppose at the end of the day you kind of have to do that, because, you know, you wouldn't be using the individual girl, you, you're using individual girls, so you can't make it, like, squad-based convincingly though it would be nice to see that sort of thing like an advanced wars sort of thing that has a you know an emphasis on causing cute brightly colored fucking chaos be interesting oh yeah it's uh, sensei there's some there's some gangs causing some trouble down um, down on main street uh, we need you to you know take care of them by any means necessary and that of course means blowing up half of main street in the process Purely just because uh, I'm denying the enemy cover, says Sensei, as he blows up a convenience store. Just give me a blue archive for the person shooting for consoles. Yeah, you could also do that too. But honestly, you know, personally, it feels like the shooter genre is uh, just, uh. I don't know. I don't quite know what's really going on with the shooter genre anymore because it's all kind of varying levels of badly done to trash. Unless you're in the indie scene, in which case there's some, there are some salvageable things, but a lot of them are indie products projects, so they're all basically duct taped together. I could have done that faster, but it's... Well, actually, fast is actually an element of the game. You do need to do that. Hmm. But we got S-rank anyway, because we're, we're going here. Two of our front-running girls are amazingly uh, well-equipped currently. Not maximum, but the best one we can actually have access to. And the two other girls that we have on the front are... In, are very good for what they are, and dealing red damage. Well, dealing, you know, bonus damage as, as per the grid. So we'll be fine. I don't think we're going to have to worry about very much. So yeah, level 32, yeah, no, we're, we're, we're over leveled for this. The, the, the last stage we might have to, like, manually do, but we are over leveled for this. Which I said very early on. When in doubt in Blue Archive, over leveled. That's how you fix most problems. You just hit it with a higher level team. It may take you a couple days of literally just spending your AP to just auto grind levels just for the XP, but at the end of the day, you just hit it with units with higher stats. It could even be the same exact units. You could fuck something up, gain five to 10 levels, and then immediately ace it. That's just kind of how the game works. It's that simple. Which is unfortunately a major issue with basically all of the archive. It's rather simple when you get down to it. The production values are nice. It's nice to look at. It's just that unfortunately it's not a great game in terms of just being a game. But I suppose, you know, Arknights kind of flip the table on basically fucking everybody actually making a game and not trying to lean on basically being on par with Cancali. That's kind of what everything was. 
Cross Frontline was, you know, somewhat yeah, better than Can Kali because it wasn't entirely decided by random bullshit. But in a sense, really, the pioneering days of gadget games were literally just... It's just Can Kali, but different. I mean, fuck. Girls Frontline's construction, you know... You know, can, you know their construction uh, system is basically just Can Kali's construction system. It's basically the same fucking thing. But maybe we're we're crossing into that amazing dawning of a of a new age of cute girls and actual video games. Cute girls and actual game play behind them. Maybe. I mean, fuck, Blue Archive certainly uses enough phone resources to demonstrate that yes, indeed, you can in fact make something rather sophisticated here. Now we just need to actually have the gameplay behind all of the fucking, you know, the, 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 you know, the nice production values, the, you know, the appeasing, the pleasing visuals, and, you know, the cute girls. Can't call you with guns. Can't call you but castles. Can't call you. Can't call you but castles. If it, if it gets money, if it gets money, it works pretty much. Yeah. The fact that girls frontline is even KC is still alive to this day is still a neat is still neat despite a less sophisticated system. Even if KC is on life support. Yeah, that's the problem with uh, Can Kali. It's the developers are basically sitting there on their laurels, and they will probably do so until the game dies. They don't have to do anything. They are perfect. They they can, as an option to themselves, sit there until the game no longer actually is functioning and just let it die. They've made enough money. They they don't have to do anything, which is unfortunate because sometimes you want to hold a gun to their heads and say, "Make something more." But, unfortunately, they, uh, they hit the ball out of the park, and now they don't have to listen to anybody, not even the people who like their game. So, uh, it is rather sad, but perhaps one day we will see yet more renaissance of the, the cute girl genre of video games. I would like them to be less of a card-collecting game, which is basically what all of them are at the end of the day, but eh, we'll see what happens. I want to see new games in this genre do new things. But I'm a weirdo. I want my opening gacha roll to actually fucking mean something. But all of these games are basically designed around obsessive re-roll, you know, obsessive either re-rolling or shilling money into the system as a point of their, you know, as an incentive of their design and the incentive that they actually have as a business. They want you to do that. However, that means that you're rolling gacha and collecting all these girls. And let's face it, you don't care about all of them, which is rather unfortunate. In terms of KC, they stuck themselves when they wanted that Imperial Japanese stuff, while Girls Frontline still manages to make their stuff broad enough to focus on anything that isn't Lamau guns and waifus lol. Well, that's the thing. It... That's a that's a point of their design. However, Can Kali could totally be more than it actually is. The developers just don't care enough to do so. And actually, they seem to think it's abhorrent because the the I believe it's the producer of Can Kali openly insulted Azure Lane, which okay. It's all about the dollar yen insert currency here. Yes, it's all about them sweet yen dollar euros. Sweet, sweet yen dollar pound hashtag. But you could look at Ark Knights as an advancement over, well, not necessarily in terms of gameplay because it's a completely different game. But you could look at Ark Knights as some of the people from Girls Frontline develop Girls Frontline's development branching out more because hey, there are dudes in Ark Knights. I mean, the way the game the game looks very similar because the fucking artist is the artist behind Girls Frontline is the fucking artist in control of the project, so he gets to decide what everything looks like. And uh, on top of that, they, yeah, they just kind of branched out into several insane different directions. Some of them outright furry, but oh, sure, fine. 
they're at least trend-setting things. There are Hispandos in that game, as well as actual gameplay, and also slave labor camps, otherwise known as your base. So yeah, Ark Knights is a very good trendsetter for, you know, actually advancing the whole mobile game genre. Unfortunately, the projects that we have currently will most likely not actually take advantage of any of that because, unfortunately, the mobile game genre is basically how little can we do and still make lots of money. That's kind of it all it is, which is a shame. Because they do come up with rather neat inter and interesting concepts that you'd like to actually see expanded upon. And, you know, something really, you know, something really grandiose done with them. The only problem is, that never fucking happens! Because the people who are in control of these things never do that! <laughs> Girls Frontline 2 is kind of an exception because I, they made XCOM. That's something that, 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 that's something. The only problem is nobody else is doing that sort of thing. Males in my gacha? Oh, no, 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 no. Well, you see, that's the thing. Yeah, I see, it's kind of an odd thing. Yeah, you kind of should have male characters in, in these games because, you know, it's, it's not all, it doesn't always have to be a garden of lilies and actu actually that's kind of a ma major flaw with most anime plots. Unfortunately, it's also a plot of uh, ma a major fault of the current uh, current game I have running for uh, for Necronica Camp Cough. If you remember, yeah, there's a bit of a gender imbalance. There's way too many cute girls and two ma male characters. Two. One of them is a player character, and one of them is basically Mickey from Area 88, but it's Ground Mickey. You heard a Ground Gundam? Well, how about Ground Mickey? That's basic. So, unfortunately, I've created a bit of a problem for myself and that made the problem worth by electing to steal Problem Solver 68 in their entirety. So this, there's a lot of cute girls running around. And I unfortunately fell into the same loop that I just, you know, the same problem that I just outlined where, you know, guys, it doesn't have to be, it doesn't always have to be all cute girls all the time. But some people like that, so I'm not going to judge. Oh, hi, Shivaxi, what's up? People wanted to be a girl in their life, like role player. At the end of the day, it's you know they can as long as they rationalize it, it makes sense. But you know my stance on Blue Archive, and it's fun to have games that are like this. This is all some bizarre, weird, really esoteric sort of pseudo sequel to Negima. Fucking Negima, but all the girls have fucking guns, and they're all insane superhumans. So basically, every girl is a Suna. <laughs> yeah, and sexy as fuck, too. In some ways that are kind of dangerous. Some ways that are average and upstanding, like the bunny girls, and then there are some ways that are actually kind of dangerous. Like Mutsuki and Hina. Good god, imagine if Negima came out with when gacha games were a thing we'd be drowning in asuna faces yeah that's a mm. we're somewhat saved by the creator of negima making negima basically out of spite and not necessarily seriously pursuing it yeah, but it's fun. To, it's fun to think how certain fads would have gone if certain other animes were at the wheel. As you can see, they have a medic over there. When we actually have to care again, we'll actually want to kill those first. <laughs> Rules of war on land? No, sir. No, we shoot the medics first to deny you your ability to sustain damage. No, no, no. The medics die first.
But there are some... But this is the funny thing, that as much as I'd say that this is kind of an issue of, you know, the massive gender disparity in these games, at the end of the day, most people prefer it to be all cute girls, and not just males. Some women like it all to be cute girls, too. So you can't say that this is entirely a bad thing. And honestly, at the end of the day, every time I, I look back at, uh, you know, some opinions that I held about wanting to advance the uh, video game... Uh, uh, well, video games as an entertainment medium and doing more sophisticated, more intelligent things. And that was all just, you know, a series of monkey paw moments where I got that and then everything was even fucking worse. So you know what? Maybe I should just shut up. Maybe we should just shut up and enjoy what we have in some cases because sweet mother of Christ, if the wrong people get their hands on it, they ruin it every single time. And there's no way to stop them once the whole horrible machine gets going. And it's not like I don't enjoy the nice fantasy of, you know, being the, uh, being the, the main character on an adventure with a bunch of cute girls to save the world. I'm sorry. SAVE THE WORLD! Good, there we go. Now I'm a person of my generation. Who doesn't like that fantasy? Absolutely fucking no one. And if you are, if, if you are one of those people that claims to not like that fantasy, well, you're a fucking square. Really nice for you. Yes, indeed. This is, in fact, part of the male fantasy. And it's good that way. That's the best part. Imagine if video games didn't appeal to anyone's fucking fantasies. Why would anyone fucking play them? Why would we put so much time and effort into these games if they didn't actually appeal to our fantasies? So I suppose, um, in the end, what remains true is simply, um... It's how the idea is presented, not the originality of the idea. Though I am experimenting with extremely original ideas, which are essentially car accidents of different things that I've already seen before. I don't quite know a surefire way to create amazing original ideas, but, um... You know, just taking this one thing and then crashing into the something un completely unrelated and just seeing, kind of just analyzing how the effects would go. You know, how the effects go and how they, you know, how it develops is my... Uh, amazing uh, insinuation for original ideas. Mm, yes, the fantasy of being a forklift driver. Mm -hmm. Men only care about one thing and it's disgusting. Forklift driver clothes. <laughs> Yo, what's in the bag? The bodies. Haha, <laughs> just kidding. Also, um, yeah, uh, speaking of Mutsuki, it, it, I was rather surprised that, uh, whatchamacallit, Diku actually asked me, uh, who, which girl would be best suited for wearing a Sam Hyde shirt? And I said, anyone in Problem Solver 68. And the results of Musuki in that doing, like, what, 500 likes at this point was actually really surprising to the both of us. So yes, I am the, I am the villain responsible for that one. I am the culprit, take me away. That's rather funny how that one seriously did the fucking numbers, didn't it? See, we have good ideas here. We run businesses. Oh, so it was you. Yes, it was I. The showman. <laughs> well, actually, it was mostly Diku's idea, and I just kind of put forward the... You know, I just kind of put forward the suggestion. But, hey, knocked that one out of the park, didn't we?
787 likes now, 132 retweets. Yeah, you see, that shit's doing the fucking numbers. <laughs> yes, turns out it was me all along, and my ideas are actually pretty good. It's just that nobody can fucking see them! So I actually have to go to Deku and have him draw things and, you know, put that put those ideas in front of his 16,000 subscribers. <laughs> He decided which one, which one was wearing the actual shirt, though, so it's mostly to credit to him, but, hey. You could, you could back that up to, uh, well, I was streaming Blue Archive, and I made Blue Archive a thing, so it put the idea in his head, and we just kind of incited it from there. Well, of course, yes, I do have good ideas, and Deku also has good ideas, it's just a matter of who fucking sees them. Or rather, how many people see them? Um, no thanks to the bullshit algorithmic nightmares that are YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, and uh, anything else. Unfortunately, um, this is not con a conspiracy theory, it's actually a factual statement. Uh, if you posted wrong think, Twitter throttled and banned you. That's not an exaggeration or understatement. They literally admitted to doing that. So, uh, hmm. Damn me for not having more incredibly shallow opinions. But I've decided I'm going to be less political out, you know, these days, because uh, at the end of the day, you look out there and no one really fucking cares about making sense anymore, do they? It's completely worthless now that everybody's racing around trying to be the most contrarian fucker ever, honestly. Nobody's trying to make fucking sense, and that's... It's completely worthless. You're not going to have, like, a Digimon movie ending with these fuckers. All this shit posting in every fucking direction? No. <laughs> Likely what you're gonna have happen is what's his face, the fucking main villain from the Digimon movies, actually trying to destroy the word, and some fucker, and yo, so yo, when time comes for the entire internet to, to to assemble and stop them, one screen's gonna pop up, and some fucker's gonna sit there and go, ha ha, based. You can't do anything, so why fucking bother with the conversation anymore? Also, I have an idea for a uh, uh, Mitsuki meme that I was gonna work on today, but I also made that other meme. So I've I've got, I've got a funny idea. Mainly because I figured out finally how to you know, like sensibly use masks and surveys. I have an idea. I have to actually get some footage for it. But I have me an idea. It, it's a giggle. Again, the Twitter is a corporation that reserves the right to do whatever whatever the crap it wants to your data. Yes, clockwork, except when someone buys that corporation and suddenly it looks like the polarities are going to be shifted, everyone screams, whines, and complains that, oh no! Uh, you, you can't, you, you, you can't just buy Twitter and change the rules. That's, that, that's censorship, says the people who were championing censorship like five minutes ago. Twitter is geared for maximum interaction, which apparently involves recommending things that will make you mad. Inter yeah, uh, something like that, or just interact, like, or sending people around in circles, where they only get seen by people who, are, who are, like, have similar likes, which means that's completely fucking worthless as a, like, trying to get, like, anything done, honestly? You have to basically be totally fake in order to actually break out of those loops. You have to actually do things that aren't you in order to actually get out of that loop, which are, which is, what the fuck? I didn't come here, you know, trying to make, uh, you know, a business and getting internet famous, trying to be a fake person. I can't be. Have you tried to fake it for 15 hours? Straight? No. You can't do it. At some point, you're there. I mean, yesterday, Twitter algorithm gave me... Twitter stuff about oh crud about oh crud a butt hurt make artist delete tutorial <laughs> and that's before I see the Matsuki hide shirt <laughs> the internet clearly doesn't make any sense nobody on the internet makes any sense and it, it it's all garbage so really I'm just being I'm just I've just decided to be less political because it's completely fucking worthless now there's no there's no there's no, nothing amazing going to come out of the conversation I'll try to be entertaining when I can be though. 
You can't be complete. You can't be totally detached from everything and not be entertaining. Even the VTubers actually have to be real people at the end of the fucking day. There's only so much material that they can possibly come up with, even though most of them are actually pretty good at the idea. But uh, you can't be totally separated from literally everything in the world going on right now. However, there's a balance. And now it's not a balance out of... It, it's, uh, it's not a balance out of necessity to keep your job, it's a balance out of nobody fucking makes any sense and you'll just be going around in circles and sound like a moron at the end of the day. I mainly use Twitter to look at big anime games. A completely respectable hobby because, quite honestly, that's... It's worthwhile... It's one of the more worthwhile things to use Twitter for. Wow, what a surprise. The Twitter... You, the, the, you, all the Tumblr refugees left Tumblr when they, they... They removed all of the porn, and now Twitter is only good for porn. Wow. It's almost like this... Wow. Funny how that works, huh? Big anime titties, YouTuber drama, cosplay, cosplay porn, and gun plus. Well, again, all sensible pastimes. I only use Twitter because apparently all of Japan decided it, it's an art gallery and you can't see anything without an account. Whew. You have to go where the people are. And since Tumblr doesn't exist anymore, really, in terms of relevance, the next stop is Twitter. And then when Twitter falls apart, somewhere else. We'll let you know when we find that somewhere else. But I'm hopeful that when Elon, Elon Musk actually buys the company and it internally, it just basically puts, you know, you know, sends everyone to the Emerald Mines and sends all of the management, you know, up against the wall to the firing squad, things might get better. Maybe. But honestly, the whole situation with Elon Musk is kind of strange because doesn't he, I don't even know what the fuck's going on anymore. He's still he's still in the process of buying the thing, but there are, it looks like Twitter might fucking collapse before then, honestly. I don't know what the hell's going on, but everything's fucking nuts. Nothing makes any goddamn sense. And uh, yeah, the time for fixing anything is well in past. Now we just got to. Now we gotta see this, uh, see this, this... Well, we're not all on the same ship, honestly, but we see our, we see our vessels through this fucker of a storm. It's not like we tried to, we didn't try and stop it, but because we didn't stop it, now we all have to deal with it. And maybe all of the morons will learn for next time. But then again, they never really fucking do. They'll just waltz off thinking they were right and quickly change the fucking subject. <laughs> If Lorans could morons could learn, they would not be morons. This is entirely true. Nice uh, stop in midair there, Nero. But yes, if if the stupid people could learn. Um, stupid people would, would yo, know, calling someone stupid would be less of an insult. But, uh, as we see out there, the, um, yeah, the, the whole situation in the world isn't really getting all that much better, so we're just gonna have to make our own way through this, and, uh, yeah, to each his own on that one. As an influencer, I don't think I have anything really to influence you with at this point. There you go again, Karen, shooting dead bodies. Congratulations, you successfully targeted and eliminated a dead man. The AI in this game, I swear. But I suppose they have to make sure the AI is dumb enough to actually warrant your existence, because this is entirely your thing. Even though currently I am kind of asleep at the wheel. I've, I've put the iPad down and I'm 
I'm, 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 I'm looking at anime titty on the internet currently, apparently. According to this video game, really. Because everyone's out there just doing everything on their own, and uh, they don't uh, they don't need me in my iPad. But um, the game is, I suppose, minimally designed so that the AI is so is just stupid enough to need your help. They're nice girls, but they are just stupid enough to not be able to survive without you, unless you overlevel them. In which case, you already gave them the amount of help that they needed anyway. It's still you doing all of the work. It's just that you're playing the game even more like just a gear check than it already is. It basically is just a gear check. This is just kind of how these games work. They're leveling checks. It's a DPS check. Whatever you want to call it, it's basically it. So this is a very interesting um, layout here. I'm gonna actually see how many, uh, which we call how many S ranks we need to you know, continue S ranking this because I may have to just sit here and wait for that one guy to walk forward. <laughs> But I have been obsessing over Blue Archive for quite some time, even before I actually started to stream this, because uh, it was something to do and something that I could do originally in my corner without having, uh, without having to actually worry about streaming. Because that's kind of been the death knell of me in Gacha games. They're incredibly hard to manage and based on the other things that I was doing, I wasn't actually able to manage them very well. I played in the beta for Girls Frontline and then immediately fell off the fucking horse because of life problems and also the rest of my career. That's a shame. But let's see where this goes, because I'm going to be doing something entirely different going forward. But I do want to actually still play other things, but let's see if I can actually keep a sensible schedule. Then we gotta work in Twitch Plays Necronica, which... Okay, it's three times. So we're gonna have to do three. Okay. So we don't actually need that guy. All we need to do is walk over here. Dematerialize this man. Walk over here, get in this fight, and then kill the boss. I'm thinking about the meme again. I'm going to make it. It's going it, to. It's going to be. A, it's going to be one hell of a giggle. You will giggle. I swear. Just, stupid thing ran through my mind again as I, I saw that fucking that loading screen again. You will fucking giggle. I swear. See, they even had an attack buff there. They they, they needed even less of my fucking health. Doing this job, yeah, eventually you get older and you, your shoulders really don't like sitting here for this long. Though this also may be, you know, down to me buying a Secret Labs chair and unironically believing it would be a, a good investment. It kind of wasn't. It was good 
for a bit, but these things do not age well. And yes, yeah, fucking four hundred dollars. If I'm gonna spend four hundred dollars on a fucking chair, I want it to last. Lando, is it even remotely possible for a Western game dev to make cute girls with, with guns game with Western art styles? I am thinking it's just going to be terrible. Well, Drago, I think it's entirely possible, but the problem is that Western game development, yo, studio, yo, Western game developers wouldn't immediately be able to pick up the people that would make it happen. Or make it not cringe. Because the way things are going, it's all institutionalized fucking stupidity, honestly, with people, really overeducated people, thinking that they're smarter than they actually are, starting to dictate and play God with how, you know, entertainment works. This happens at all levels. But the problem is, when you start trying to tell your audience what they like, is when you start making pretty fucking big critical errors and start producing garbage. So... I believe that the we I believe that Western companies could do this. You could totally have Girls Frontline, but it's Call of Duty. You could do it. Or even Blue Archive, but it's Call of Duty. You can do it. The problem is that the developers that can actually do that, the the you know, the studios and the publishers with the with the funding and manpower to make those happen, will pick all of the wrong fucking people and completely fuck it up. There are, you know, artists and, you know, other you know, other, other people that can fill game design positions that get the idea of, oh, cute, ga uh, cute gacha game, girl. Hmm. Let's do that. They ha they understand how this works. And they actually probably try and make a good game aside from, you know, just a slot machine. Because remember, they tried to steal that. They looked at gacha and went, hmm. Battlefront 2. They, 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 they glanced over, they glossed over the gacha component, they, they glossed over the cute girl component of the, of these games, and just went, hmm, it's all a slot machine underneath it. Well, let's jam that into our game. No, it's literally the worst fucking part about it. But, if you, there are people in Western societies, yes, here in the West, who can actually put together sensible ideas and draw some cute anime girls with non- distinctly non-Japanese art styles. They can do it. The problem is, the, the establishment won't pick them up because they're all retarded. That's the sad thing. So they could do it, they just won't do it because they're stupid. They're totally capable of doing it. They could do, they could, if they wanted to, they could in fact do it. However, unfortunately, uh, on the idea of making a game that is, that functions like this, where it's all cute girls all the fucking time, um, the feminist would screech, like No Tomorrow, that it's all misogynistic and uh, only appealing to the male fantasy, like I outlined. But again, why would you play a game that doesn't appeal to a fantasy? Why would you put any amount of time if it doesn't actually fulfill any fantasies? Why would you buy a s such things? Let them rage. That's a good, a good attitude, but the problem is that they, they'll and they throw wrenches in the machine, and it, it would take a, a publisher and developer that's really fucking determined to make the project work in order to get over those people. It's kind of like... How Activision didn't actually want Call of Duty 4 to be made and fought Infinity Ward every step of the way for development because they still thought, no, people don't want modern troops. People only want to play World War II games. Call of Duty 4 comes out and destroys everything. But that took drive and dedication and just absolute fucking willpower by the developers to continue on in an environment of sheer pessimism and just the people above them not believing in a single thing that they were doing. If you're gonna make a Western cute girl, yo, know, style gacha game, or not necessarily, no, not a gacha game, Western style cute anime girl game, you're gonna need people that are that dedicated to fight back that form of criticism, and they will be, they will be supported. But the problem is, people are too, people within the system are too scared to actually go about it. They still think that they won't be supported or won't be supported enough and be vilified, and they will because some certain people are fucking absolute monstrosities. Uh, championing things that just don't make sense and are completely ass backwards. But, not like they are paying customers. You see, Nix, this is the thing. This is why Go Woke, Go Broke is a thing. 
the world is slowly realizing that, oh wait, these, these people with these ideas, they don't actually pay us money. We're getting to the point where they're starting to, they haven't asked, they haven't asked the question yet, but they're starting to get to the, the point of uttering the question out loud of, why are we catering to people that don't actually give us money? But the thing that's stopping them is they're, is, you know, basically all of the people, the pretentious morons that think, making really bad games, I'll say, because holy fuck, we could be here forever. Making really bad games that virtue signal in, you know, in, you know, in absence of being good games is a smart thing to do. It's like they're trying to make Oscar bait, but it's video games. But the video games don't have the Oscars. You don't have those situations like that. You can't do that. You can't make an artsy film but a video game and have it actually fly. Sometimes they get away with that, but not all the time. Some people will look at this and go, yeah, this is just a walking simulator. For example, Dear Esther. What is Dear Esther? Dear Esther, functionally speaking, from a gameplay standpoint, games like Dear Esther, or Gone Home, to use memes, they're walking simulators. They don't do anything. Those are kind of dull, but some people would also incorrectly say this about th games like Death Stranding, where Death Stranding is actually more than a walking simulator. But you see, this is the problem here. This is, we've got all this built-up stupidity that you have to cut through in order for Western game designers to make cute anime girl games. Yeah, uh... Really, the sad issue with all of it is they could do it, and it could actually be not half bad. The only problem is there's too much resistance within everything to actually get it done. There'd just be too much too much of a fucking problem, even though really at the end of the day we're we're starting to see the inverse. The the boy the, the end result of the boy who cried wolf is starting to take effect. Where people are actually uh, completely complacent with concerning things, or even championing that you know, concerning things should actually wind up happen. So here's an example. You know that uh, the Last of Us was originally a game where it was originally the original idea for The Last of Us was uh, the zombie virus only infected women, and then basically you were shooting a bunch of women through the entire game, and they start decided that they weren't going to do that because some female employees complained. Now you utter that idea, and some people will go look at that and go, "Oh shit, man, based, fucking do it." See what I mean? Where. It was arguable before, and somewhat, you know, questionable that you know, a matter of taste, even if it was, a, a, you know, a, a sensible idea in terms of functioning. Yeah, you could have a, you, you could have a zombie apocalypse where all the women are mindless, <laughs> bloodthirsty monsters. <laughs> oh no, I'm becoming more and more misogynist by even uttering the idea. You could do that. You could make it work. You could rationalize it so it functions perfectly fine. You could do it, tell a sensible story about that. But again, the disrespecting women thing, you know, back then, you know, when people had some sense, like, you know, you look at that and go, okay, maybe have some class about this, guys. That's an argument. That was a sensible thing. But now we've gone so far down this rabbit hole of making really bad entertainment that respects the woman that people will go, I don't want to buy games that respect women anymore. In fact, I want the opposite. And the funny thing is about the gacha games, honestly, they're not all that disrespectful to women. Yes, they sexualize women, sure, but we also get nice backstories and we actually care about these characters. The parasocial relationship that the waifu has, that, the wa that is the waifu is, you know, a thing. You do care about these characters, even though the feminists will screech, Ah! Male fantasies! Eh! Ew! They'll screech like that, but at the end of the day, you're still caring about women. 
you're still doing it. You're, you're still, you know, looking at a woman and seeing the, the positive qualities of that woman in, in your head while, you know, like enjoying the thought of, you know, the nice thought of interacting with this, this woman that the game has presented to you. you, you this is, in a way, respect woman. <laughs> However, not in the insulting way. It, Yes, the male fantasy, but yes, males exist. We do actually, some people, myself included, are actually entertained by the idea of being put into an anime-esque situation with, you know, being thrust into some amazing, you know, adventure with a cute girl to go on the adventure with and hold hands with. Wow! Holy fuck, I'm some kind of demon spawn. I must be literally fucking Hitler for liking that. As is the air today. Hmm. I joined up just in time. It seems on a re unrelated note, when when would you be able to watch Love, Death, and Robot Season 3 on the server? Oh, hi, Val. Um, possibly soon? Not quite sure. The next couple of months are going to be kind of odd because I'm... Going to New York for my sister's birthday, and um, we'll see how that yeah, how it plays out. Because we, me and me and Martin are just kind of trying to figure out this scheduling hell. Because he's also skip, he's also going to see Doug in the same time frame. And uh, respecting women is dope, am I right? Yes, when the women are respectable. Or in some cases, not respectable. Because like like we pointed out with this game, some of these women are just incredibly mentally unstable, crazy people. We still like them anyway, because a men, a, what a shocking, amazing uh, concept. Men can look past a lot. Love is a very powerful, irrational, and honestly dooming sort of thing. But it, you know, what you call it? You, you can look at this and say, hey, it's a game where that showcases a lot of women with very extreme and contrasting personalities and. You know, makes, you know, makes a case for dating each one. Is that a bad thing? No. I'll be stuck at home this summer, so I'm free to stream almost whenever. Well, we'll set up a day for it because, well, we're going to have some time here, and I have some time currently because I still haven't found a, a reputable job. So... It's all really fucking stupid and ass backwards, but everybody knew that from the get-go. But how this got in is because, frankly, rich people see this as a way to manipulate publicity. That's all it is. It's just, it, this whole, all, all of this shit got into the limelight because it was easy. Right? It's easy to say, oh, think of the children. It's easy. It's the easiest fucking thing in the world to say. You don't actually have to do anything. You'll just say it out loud and people think you're a better person even though that doesn't actually mean anything until you actually do something. And a lot of these people don't do something or do anything at all. But so, yes, respect the women and, you know, you know, transgender rights or whatever. It's easy to say, which is why it's been so publicized now and people are basically being walking billboards for it, even though these people aren't really the people you'd want being walking billboards for it. You really I'm not insulting you for your, your life choices or what you were born with or whatever. I don't care. You can do whatever the hell you want power to you. But these people are not the people you want representing you. They're insane, narcissistic, and to a point sociopaths that don't actually mean half of the shit that they say. Think of the children. Sexualizes children as young as five by dressing them up in fashion shows, mostly old shows mostly old men watch. Yeah, there's some really screwed up things about society at all levels, but some things we just kind of learn to look past. But at the end of the day, um, we're just, once again, we're chasing our tails doing the wrong fucking thing, but I don't think anyone's really listening anymore. So I could sit here and talk about all of this, but uh, it, it, we're at the point where clearly nobody's fucking listening. And it's not actually helping my career at all uh, to, to keep talking about this, even though um, you'd want to think that me being honest and pointing out these things would, you know, make you know, make enough sense. But uh, it looks as though that um, alt-right uh, proponents and uh, pundits are full up. We've got as many of them as people want to hear, 
and they don't want little old me. Nor is the opposition coming around to looking at themselves in the mirror and going, well, maybe I am wrong on something. Nope, not happening. So me sitting here rambling, I'm, I'm literally just giving the, uh, quite frankly, the spying material that the FBI and the CIA use uh, that's also built into the algorithms that Twitter and YouTube use. I'm giving them more ammunition to basically algorithmically put me in a fucking corner somewhere where nobody can hear me and I won't make any money. By the way, have you considered streaming some of your tabletop campaigns a la Critical Role? Well, you see, we kind of got to this with Guns and Rock and Roll and Dead and Servanus. However, that was a bad idea and a good idea in some cases. Right idea, bad time, I should say. Uh, though there is the idea for Twitch Plays Necronica, which would be very low substance and not quite the same thing as you'd see with other tabletop, you know, uh, streams. Because those are literally just people playing tabletop games in front of you, and you are just in the audience. I have a different idea to make myself different, and quite frankly, running these games is incredibly fucking taxing, for one. And then also doesn't provide the correct amount of substance that I'd want in, in a lot of cases. Plus, I don't actually have any other good role players in terms of live role... Excuse me. Live role play to work with. So the air would just be kind of... Not the best, uh, I don't, I, I don't have the best, uh, uh, standing to be doing that, or I'm not in the best situation to be doing something exactly like that, but Twitch Plays Necronica would actually be sen somewhat sensible, I suppose, because it's just me telling you what the fuck happens when you vote on something. You are the, the, the kid in the fun, yes. You are the kid in the fun. These days, you are all right, even when you look to the right, you see Stalin next to you. All right? Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, you're all right, even when, you you know, you're, you're, you're clearly not anywhere near the right spectrum of politics. Because, again, none of this makes any fucking sense, and people are just saying words. So it really doesn't matter, and I feel like I've already, you know, made, you know, I feel like I've already just kind of, yeah, nobody wants to hear about this, really. Nobody really wants to hear about this anymore. We all kind of already know it. It's nice to have some confirmation on our feelings about things, but at the end of the day, I think people are really just tired of hearing about political shit. Some people, most, the vast majority of people have already tuned out and they don't want to hear it, which is why I think VTubers are also very popular because they very wisely stay away from politics most of the time. And, hmm. Our reward for trudging on there is we have a gacha roll to get to, but we have to actually finish 6-1 first, and then we can go off to tactical challenge. All oh, right, armored units. Oh boy. And two squad. Wow. Look at all this advancement in mechanics. Now's the point where they throw two squads at us, even though we don't actually need two squads to finish this. But okay, so let's hop over here and actually put together an armor team. We do already have one. Um, so, Iori and Tsubaki there. We're, we're gonna get very, very familiar with Tsubaki in just a few moments. Even though I could use a Shino too, but Tsubaki is good. Momoi, and then Nanomi, who needs to be leveled, but she'll be all right. And then on top of that, we'll use uh, Yuhada, just for the sake of actually having an armor damage dealer. And then um, Fuka for healing. Right, so these girls should get on just fine. And I did say I was going to use the bunny girls in every aspect, even though... Um, yeah, Nero would only do normal damage against armor, and Karen is straight up resistant, so she's actually not really a good pick for this at all. But we have other, we have a regular Karen there, who is ar an armor damage uh, specialist, so that kind of balances things out. And we'll have Bunny. This is where Bunny Asuna would be if we had one, 
but I suppose we could, well, actually we can't use, again, blue damage type, what am I thinking? We could use, we could use Akane back here, even though that's kind of a letdown in terms of damage. Then there's Junko. Junko's actually pretty good. We actually have a reason to use her now. You see, I'm getting all of these fucking girls, and I just kind of forget they exist. There's also Hasumi. Yes, there is. And I think Hasumi actually has equipment, too, which would make her a better role at this. I do want an excuse to use Akane more because I actually like Akane. It's just that Akane is very situational. She was actually pretty good, apparently, against Bina. Uh, most of the top teams for the latest Total Assault were actually using Akane, probably because she's an armor damage unit and also has the ability that reduces the, the you know, it, it's going against a single target boss. So her ability is very effective at reducing its defense, thereby letting you kill it faster. So that's what Akane is for. At least I want to think so. So she has her uses. The problem is because she's such a low damage unit that she doesn't get too much screen time. Maybe that's what we need. Me, 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 me. Well, maybe what we need is we need Bunny Akane to be, you know, you know, akimbo well rods, but she has as much DPM as, a, as like SMGs. Like she attacks that fast with, you know, a, a, just it, it's two visibly two pistols, but she has the same damage output of, uh, as an SP, you know, an SMG or something like that or an AR, something comparable. So that she could actually be a damage dealing unit in addition to having a skill that is I don't know what her skill would be. It's probably explosive related, if we're going to be really accurate about it. And also, I managed to get a bunch of tier 2 parts. So we actually have some level of tier 2 equipment to actually put on our girls. Akane is more for debuffing raid bosses. Yeah, pretty much. That's only, really, only what she's for, and that's kind of sad. I want her to be better. <laughs> Though, if we were going to compensate about this, well, she does do armor damage, so that's perfectly fine. She can do some amount of armor damage because she's, you know, got the type advantage. But I suppose, yes, Hasumi would be sensible, but we'll see how she performs. We'll watch her damage. I've got plenty of these. And very quickly going to have not plenty of them. Hmm. Bit of a short-sighted thing there that you can't actually equip those at the same screen. Annoying, but okay. She can always be the best. Yes, especially if you just over-level her and just throw her against really, really low level content i'm saving those we could make her ability better but i'm saving these the bunny girls are getting those first however unfortunately we don't have the uh, the materials to actually upgrade niru or karen currently we need more raw stuff okay so that should be good enough <laughs> They will both likely be fine no matter what we do. <laughs> While I'm sitting there, I should probably actually equip these girls. This is probably a waste of a pink report, but eh. You know, we have gacha tactics, but how about gacha strategy games? How would those even work anyway? Well, first of all, you couldn't do PvP at all. Uh, you do have gacha- you probably do have strategy games that use gacha components, but the problem is you are limiting the player uh, from- you know, player on what they can build based on luck out of the gacha, and that's really gonna fuck over any sort of competitive, uh, yo, know, idea. It's also probably not happened yet because R RTSs are a dead genre. Unfortunately. I'd like it, though. I, it would be actually rather entertaining to see... Whatchamacallit? To see, uh... 
you know, Blue Archive be an action RTS of all fucking things. Like, it's halfway, it's like, it's, it's like how Dota used to be more War, uh, Warcraft 3 than what Dota is. So it wouldn't be a MOBA game, it would still be a real-time strategy game, but you'd still have, you have the girls' as hero units. That'd be interesting. But, um, again, you... It all comes down to who else wants to make these fucking things. Well, the latest mobile strategy game is literally Company Heroes, but with unit unlocks. Oh, well, somebody already jumped on the grenade for that one. Somewhat of an unwise idea in my book, but okay. Command & Conquer 4 had a similar system, and it was a disaster. Yeah! Yeah, we don't talk about Twilight. Wait. You would still have base building, though. You would definitely still have base building, so you wouldn't go full MOBA game on people. But I also kind of want to see it as sort of like an advanced wars sort of tactic game. So maybe an action, maybe like a, a real time strategy game is a bad idea. Maybe a turn based game is better suited. Like it's just like an expression or rather a grandiose expression of this map. The gameplay is this more or less, but instead of it being tiles in the middle of nowhere, it's the actual terrain that you're fighting on. And then you can do things like horror, you know, blow up half of the map this way. Sounds like you can build generic units for free, but you can roll for Dawn of War, Dota-esque hero, heroes, and the gacha rolls. Okay, so how much does a King Tiger cost? Hmm? That's, the fr that's clearly what they're doing there, and that's a terrible idea. Because, funny enough, Blue Archive's competitive play actually really is a game that's pretty much just, yo, know, it, it is, as someone said, use meta units or lose. So we can already see what it looks like when you don't actually have the meta units. I've experienced it. It's fucking annoying. There's no real way of getting around actually, you know, outplaying these units because of the way the situation is set up. You can't do, you can't really get around this aside from straight up overleveling everyone. And you can't, that, you can't really do that. Yep. And there's Subaki doing her everyone shoot at me meme. We will get very, very familiar with Subaki. Which is funny, funny because I actually unlocked her uh, her relationship scene. So we'll do that before we engage in PvP so everyone knows why Subaki is really fucking good. Or rather, everyone knows Subaki's personality as we understand also that she's really fucking good. Imagine this, King Tiger is an uncommon unit, but King Tiger piloted by anime Grim, Whit Grim Whitman is a rare unit. Girl Whitman, yes. Fucking... Anime stereotype, uh... uh Asuka Whitman. <laughs> yes, is a hero unit, yes. Mm -hmm. But yes, that it doesn't really matter, though, because... The rare unit obviously will have better stats than the, than, than the base unit, and thus giving the player that got it an advantage, and this all works out unless you're playing a PvP game, in which case that really fucks balance. Now, if you're playing a PvE scenario, that actually works out. It's actually somewhat fair like that, because, well, all you... Everybody has something they can punch with, more or less. Like you get a th you get a free three star with the the first gacha roll in this game, for example. And then in Ash Arms, you can re-roll until you actually like the girl that you that you have. And sometimes you can actually get multiple three stars out of that if you're really determined. I got three in one roll, just fucking testing the system. But this only works out in a cooperative sense. It becomes incredibly frustrating really quickly when you force people to go into competitive matches with people who are better than them purely because dumb luck. And that's what the gacha is at the end of the day. It's dumb luck. Really all it is is this illusion that the roulette wheel rolling in your favor is an act of fate that you 
are meant to command the cute girl with incredible amounts of power. Yes, you, sir! It's like fucking... Nice to have her around again, but yes, that cute girl. Me! That! Me and that cute girl! That unsettling cute girl with worrying amounts of competency for killing people. Me and that girl, we're going on an adventure. It's gonna be great. That's really what this game is. Or rather, all of these games are. It's not cost fallacy. Not necessarily. It's not the same idea in this Junko. You stole her food and now she wants to kill you. Um, it's not necessarily sunk cost fallacy, but it's the idea that the role will mean something amazing. It's that idea of rolling once and hitting the jackpot. That's part of the gambling fallacy, but that's also inherited, that enhanced by the goal being not money, but a parasocial relationship with a cute girl that isn't real. It's horrifying when you actually articulate it like this, but yeah, no, that's, that's it. That's what these games are. We just smile and look past it. It's like going to a whorehouse and having one of the whores pretend that she loves you because you're her best customer. You know it's not real, but it makes the service that much more enjoyable. That's the prop. That, that's the, the the horrible underside of these games. Which, girls, you're lucky. You're all adorable, and I can look past these things. Even you, Akane, with your obsession with explosives and murdering people. Again, like I said before, men can look past a lot for love. Although, unfortunately, society is really, really de-emphasizing that kind of man. Oh, and going back to Advance Wars, how about streaming one of its clones, Tiny Metal, sometime down the line? Tiny... You see, I remember... I've, I've heard of that before. I don't remember where, but I think I've heard of that before. Well, I could use the swap thing, which costs a move, unfortunately, but I could swap there. But, hmm. But the problem with having you know, a strategy game like that and having it be competitive is, you again, you, you dumb luck determines who's better. And of course, this is actually rather unhealthy for the game because people start to throw money into this into the machine to be good at the game when luck fails them. This is good as a business model because you're forcing people to, you know, chill out to be good. But also, looking at it just generally as it is, no, that's a terrible fucking idea, you absolutely crooked monsters. I mean, the Gatchaville games under inspection are really, uh, already bad enough. But making a competitive sport based entirely on how lucky you are is a fucking terrible idea. So, the funny thing is, this is actually a PvP game, and for the most part, I actually want more PvP games and less competitive games. Which is why I like playing, say, Arma with the, you know, in PvP settings, because it's more fun that way. Uh, but, you know, there's still a very large and, you know, important PvP segment of Arma. And this is what Reforger currently is right now. But the PvP people will soon rise again and create incredibly weird-ass scenarios that'll, that are just going to be great. Play things you can't have anywhere else. But there's just so many fucking problems with creating a, a gacha game that's also a PvP thing, which is why Battlefront 2 didn't work. Because, hey, I got in the game and I got all the trading cards. And, yeah, I got my trading cards and... Oh look, someone got a fucking gold TIE Fighter in their first run, and now he's destroying me and there's nothing I can do about it. Terrible idea. Oh, I can't play any hero units because I didn't actually get any hero units, but that guy has Darth Vader. Why? Luck. Or he paid for it. Remember? A sense of accomplishment. What was the line again? A sense of, what was the other word again? If it's been so long. A sense of accomplishment and what else? Um, what was the line? The most downvoted post on Reddit. What, what was it again? Ladies and gentlemen, help me out here. A sense of pride and accomplishment. Thank you, Tazarin. Thank you, and, and thank you, Val. Yes, pride and accomplishment. That you, 
got lucky and this was like, aha, I'm the chosen one. Or you just spent money until you got what you wanted or were super awesome. In which case you, you look at people and go, ha ha, I beat you by paying for it. Both are power fantasies in a strange way, but both of them make terrible competitive environments. Because imagine if you had a tournament where, where two teams competed and the team that won is the team that has more money. Not better at playing the game. They could be objectively worse at playing the game. But the team that won is the team that has more money. They they bought more things. Like imagine it, 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 like you had a CSGO tournament and the winner was decided by who bought more skins. Who bought more egregious gun skins? That, 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 that decides the winner. That's a terrible fucking idea. Like jousting was. In a way, yes. It's not really a grand and honorable competitive sport when the winner is decided by how much money you have. Hey, um... Let's have a, a rousing competitive game of jousting, and I am supported by the King of England, who has paid for this nice horse, this nice chainmail, and this very, very thick shield. I wonder who's going to win. Surely your honor and skill will be able to will be able to match my incredible advantages that you cannot surmount. Clearly! And when I win, I can say, ah, it was destined by God. Yes. And tactical challenge is now being locked. We now have PvP. Good. But we'll get to that in a second. So this is why... You could do this... But you see, here's the thing. Me rolling through fucking segues like that. Jesus Christ. So here's the thing. This is terrible for a PvP environment. However, when you give the players a cooperative sort of, you know, situation where they all say, imagine uh, we're, st we're all playing Starship Troopers and we have to kill a shitload of bugs... Like, they're all NPCs, there's fucking thousands of them, and we all have gacha for what equipment we have. You're gonna look at the guy who has the, you know, the, 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 look at the guy that got the fucking massive chain gun and went, oh, thank God we have him. You're gonna envy him because I want to be that cool, but you're gonna be, because you're in this you know, cooperative environment, you're gonna be like, oh, thank God we actually have the means to actually surmount this and not die horribly. Thank God. This is a, a much better dynamic for this sort of thing. However, most gacha games also don't do this. Girls Frontline has a, has a means of doing this, which is the, uh, whatchamacallit, I, we played it once and I completely forgot what it means, but you know what it, you know what it is. The mode where everybody takes turns attacking, you know, spending resources and attacking a certain area. Can't remember what the fuck it was. A lot's happened in the last couple of months, but you, it creates a more healthy dynamic for this situation. However, people are also prideful, sh you know, show Bodhi narcissistic bastards, so they actually want their PvP. They want to style on people in an incredibly unfair manner. They want to do all of this, but really, it just, it's not a good idea. Or, if you want to make it enjoyable and safe, you make it a single-player game. You know, this is kind of a problem that Ace Combat has where the mechanics of Ace Combat are based around you being fucking amazing, and that's why it's enjoyable, but the moment you make it a multiplayer game, shit starts to break down. It becomes incredibly frustrating. It becomes really not that much fun at all, because everybody's fucking amazing, and so nobody is fucking amazing. And really what you have is Sky Grabass, which is not really on par with, yo, know, aerial combat Sky Grabass. It's just incredibly fucking annoying bullshit that people are artificially warping out of your field of view while you artificially warp out of their field of view so no one can really kill each other and you're just basically uselessly shooting missiles at each other that nobody can actually land a hit with and you all fly around like fucking idiots and the only way to actually really get something done is to cheese like a motherfucker. Looking at you, Tomcat, spamming phoenixes from across the map. Which is technically speaking a real-world tactic. Phoenixes are fucking terrifying, but it's not fun in the same way that single-player ace combat is fun. So, this is kind of a flaw with everything having to... I, walking into this is kind of a flaw with everything having to be multiplayer now. Remember when games didn't have to be multiplayer to be successful? I remember, but moving on. Sounds like high-tier War Thunder Jets. It basically is...
I mean, that's why that's why it was smart with AC Infinity and have competitive PvE rather than true PvP. I don't know why AC7 didn't carry that mode over. Well, all, mainly because... Oh, hey, look, more jumps. Mainly because uh, Bandai did a fucker and um, basically deleted all of the files for Ace Combat Infinity, which is why we'll likely never see anything for Ace Combat Infinity ever again. And so the developers didn't feel like doing all of that work again. And also making the PvE, uh, you know segments that Ace Combat Infinity had were a lot of work. They were good. It was sensible to actually have that sort of system. Ace Combat Infinity had a lot of fucking issues with it, but it was, you know, a good idea in the sense that, hey, the competitive modes are kind of trash. Let's just focus the game on PvE, competitive PvE score attack. Which, in a way, is still, you know, availability of things is still determined it wasn't determined by gacha but the availability of what planes you had still determined who was going to win but it, you know you didn't actually have a gacha component determining who got what plane though the fuel system was fucking retarded and i'm glad that died in the gutter quietly that reminds me to watch your assault horizon streams that is another unfortunate uh, deviation where assault horizon had a lot of interesting mechanics they weren't all good they had a lot of interesting mechanics that we will likely never see again because it's quite obvious that the whole gap was trying to get the Call of Duty audience to play Ace Combat. It didn't work, and so, so now no one cares. Or at least nobody in the development studio for Aces or Bandai cares. Which is rather sad. Like playable helicopters? The helicopter of gameplay was actually really good. The camera was kind of nauseating in certain aspects, but functionally, it all worked. And then you had the segments where you played bombers and the AC-130 segment, which is interesting, I suppose. But it was, you could make something out of this. I kind of honestly, you know, had vivid sort of, vivid sort of, you know, machinations about, say we make the, you know, the, you know, my, you know, whatchamacallit, the Servant Vosh War Ace Combat game that I have rolling around in my head. Where I actually have the air war being told in a manner like that, where you actually run around in different, you, you hop between different, um, you know, specialists that are flying different things, like it's Call of Duty, but you're hopping between, you know, fighters and, you know, bombers and ground attack, you know, helicopters and whatnot, and then AC-130s and shit like that. It basically would be Assault Horizon, but better. Way better, Jesus. The only problem with the heli missions is that they were so damn long. I don't, I didn't think that they were very long. It's just that really at that time, I remember the only negative thing that I could say about them was, yeah, the camera was awful. But anyway, we have a gacha roll now. But I suppose I'm arguing off into, in, basically into just a big stupid fucking, you know, ball of random, you know, ideas and sentences and things, words, big ball of words. Yes. But... Gacha has its place as long as you understand what Gacha is and don't make a competitive game out of a Gacha game. It is a terrible idea. It will fall apart and your competitive scene won't actually be a competitive scene. It will be a... It, it, it's a whaling contest. It'll be a whaling fucking contest. Though to make an off-color comment, I know the Japanese lo like their whaling. Yeah, like it very much. But no, we don't want that. Bad idea. You don't want your PvP, uh, yo, know, test of skill to be determined by who is going to commit more fucking money into this. Now, how about a joke to take our minds off of this fucker? Yeah, joke. Yeah, my luck here. How about a joke? Fonto doesn't get a bunny Asuna. No, I'm not going to get it. No, I'm trying reverse psychology. No, no, it's, it's likely probably not going to happen. Nope, these sounds mean nothing. I'm, I'm, I'm drawing this for my own, uh, my own amusement. Uh, nope! See? I knew it! Damn! Haha! <laughs> Pessimist. I was actually trying reverse psychology on the Gacha machine. I didn't fool the desire sensor, though. A lot of dupes, though. But then again, we have basically almost all of the girls in the game that aren't three stars, so yeah, we're going to get a lot of dupes. Mm -hmm. 
Carino. Okay. Interesting with that one. And an Akane do once again. She's really trying. She's trying. <laughs> I I ordered another cute girl, and Akane just yeah you know just yeah, yeah, I don't know burst out of a fucking birthday cake. And you're not in a bunny girl outfit, outfit Akane. I know you just want to try and cheer me up, but you're not in the bunny girl outfit yet. It's not the same, damn it. I love you. You're my maid, but still. Okay, unfortunately, uh, we're now out of gems. However, we've got some elf, and we're also going to um, upgrade uh, Surugi, or Subaki, right? Susu. It's unfortunate that we actually didn't, we also, we, we also didn't get uh, Surugi at all, but again, three stars, so. Eventually we'll get her, because we'll force the system to give us the fucking three stars, because we will literally run out of, like, there's a fail safe built in to whereas if you, whatchamacallit, if you roll X amount of times and don't get a certain girl, they will, the game will just cough the girls up. It, so we will get a roll at some point as we go where it is all fucking three stars. It's happened before. We will get a roll where it's eight three stars and it'll be all the girls we didn't get because the game will eventually have, eventually say, here you go, kid. That's actually a mechanic and it's a good one, but hey, okay, we're about half, well, actually, we've got more than halfway here. Huh. Wow, okay, that was a challenge. Hmm. Okay, so we're just about half up to another 10 pull, so that's good. Hmm. Okay, right. I'm gonna go to the bathroom, folks, and then we're gonna introduce, we're all gonna get introduced to the sleepy bear. Be right back. Well, folks, uh, change of plans there. It looks like we're gonna have to cut the stream off there because, uh, yeah, I'm being abducted. Yeah, Sydney, uh, Crab, Pop, and uh, Ancient just showed up at my house. This is what happens when people have my address. And uh, we're going out to dinner now. Um, they look very adamant. <laughs> I don't think I can say no. I know at least Sydney owns firearms. So uh, looks like I'll be back later, folks. It's been a nice stream, but, uh, well, we unlocked PvP, so we'll actually go play PvP 
later tonight. See you then, folks. <laughs>